Here's what comes with the Edge Pro Apex. You get this little bag, and I happen to get the A4 model, which designates a number of little sharpening stones, or the variation of those stones which you get. So you're going to pop this open. You're going to have the main body of the platform here. You can fold those little arms out. Okay. You're going to have some directions. Uh, again, in the, the version I got, I got this little sharpening stick. Here are the stones all wrapped up nicely. In this little compartment here is the little pivoting arm. Okay, and that locks in to the uh, suction cupped base. And then you'll also get one of these little bottles uh, that you can fill with water to wet your stones down as you sharpen. Now, this is what you get in the kit, or at least the A4 version of the kit uh, as I purchased it here about six months ago. There are a couple other things that I find that makes my life easier when I use this system. The first of those is a little Pyrex casserole dish, okay? And the second is a wet dish towel. So I just lay down the wet dish towel and I lay the Pyrex um, plate casserole dish down and I suction cup this to that. And so what happens here is now we've got the uh, sharpening system uh, or the sharpening system base attached to the Pyrex dish, and uh, glass dish, and then we have the glass dish kind of stuck to the counter with this wet cloth, so it allows me to use it much more effectively, mm -hmm. right? It also helps collect the water and the mess as you wet down uh, the, the stones, okay? Right? Then you're going to take this little pivoting arm here and make sure that you attach it correctly. There are two kind of ways that you can attach it. Just going to slip it right in there and you're going to tighten down a little screw on the back, okay? And now you're going to have the option of sliding in whatever stone you want to use. Just mention two here. Uh, this little system here, or this little attachment system there, allows you to change the angle at which you're sharpening on, okay? And so in the directions, they talk a little bit about what they think is best for you to use for different kinds of knives. You're going to have to experiment um, with uh, how things go down and, and what you like, the angles you like. One thing that this kit didn't come with, but I think that you should use, is some kind of little non-permanent marker. So a dry erase uh, marker works really well to mark the edge of your blade to see where you're actually removing material or where you're, you're polishing. Uh, one major drawback of this system is that it is gonna cost you $250 plus uh, for it. And people are gonna think, hey, well you get this little pivoting arm and it seems like there are some very similar looking offerings uh, that are much cheaper that seem to look exactly the same. But I'll tell you, I've had some of my friends get them and they are not the same. The Edge Pro Apex is worth the additional money. Here's a sweet little Benchmade knife, okay? It's relatively new, but it's been used a lot. And what I love about the Edge Pro Apex is it allows me to get this perfect edge, like a factory edge, maybe even better than a factory edge there on it. So it's hair popping sharp, okay? And I can do that repeatedly with all kinds of knives. And I've had the Edge Pro Apex for about six months, and I have sharpened 18, 19 knives. Knives, I have a bin of knives that I had kind of set aside because they got dull or, so I, I've taken them out, I've fixed whatever little systems might be wrong in terms of screws being loose or uh, different things, and then I've sharpened all of them. And I find myself using knives that I thought I would never use again. So the knife we're gonna be sharpening here today for this video is my much used and abused and loved Benchmade Griptilian. So I like this little setting there on the light green, maybe just a little bit over the light green there. And uh, I've got a, a various set of different stones here. So the, the coarsest stone I have is 120, then I've got 220, then I have 400, okay. Then I have 600, and I think what's really nice is, you can see as I've used these stones, uh, you can't tell the markings on the front of them, but they are stamped here in the back in the kind of aluminum back plate. 600 and then 1,000, and then these shiny pieces here are for the different tapes, okay? So there are some different little uh, tapes that you can get, sorry, little tapes that are basically uh, very fine sandpaper to even go finer grit than the 1,000 grit. So, 
You can also adjust this little metal component there with this little kind of um, plastic attachment that protects your knife from the metal uh, little slide. That slides up and down and allows you to set the depth of this here. So I've set it at what I primarily use for folding knives and I've done both folding and fixed blade knives on this. The way this works is this adjusts right here, spins out, okay, and it allows you to slip in the different um, stones. So the 120 and the 220 I find uh, I use sometimes, but I generally start because this knife is in pretty good condition. I start with 400. So I just stick it on there and then I just tighten it down. Okay, just like so. And I, you don't have to crank it down, but I do tighten it down. And then I run a little water on the stone. You could also, I think, uh, put these stones in a dish full of water or a bowl full of water and just have them pre-soaking. Uh, the more coarse stones soak up water a lot faster as the stones get finer and finer. Um, you gotta kinda work the water into them a little more intentionally. They're less porous, of course. And so it takes more time to get the water into them. Just gonna lay that off to the side, okay? And you're gonna just place your knife on this. Now, what you're gonna wanna be careful of is we're talking about angles. This whole little pivoting arm and this allows you to only sharpen at one angle as long as you hold the knife in the same place. But if I sharpen it once like this, and then once like this, and once like that, and of course I'm exaggerating that, uh, then you're not gonna be sharpening at the same angle. So we're just gonna come across like this and I'm being careful to make sure, okay, that my blade is resting flat. I'm not tilting the blade up, I'm not tilting the blade down, I'm tilting it in a consistent way. Whoop. Tilting it in a consistent way and just working this across. From time to time, you're gonna need to feel the little burr and you can feel it. So I've sharpened it on this edge and so there's a sharp little burr when I run my thumb across it right there that I can feel. So then I'm gonna come over to this side Grab it like so. And you can count strokes, you can do different things. I find that the, it's best to kind of do it like six or seven times on each side and then kind of start feeling where that burr is. Okay. And then you just keep working it. And after I've, I've felt I've kind of gotten it with the 400, uh, then I'll move, I'm <laughs> fighting around the tripod here for the camera guys, uh, then I would move to a finer grit and then a finer grit and a finer grit. But it's just that easy. All it is is time and you'll have to experiment with the different angles on particular knives that you like or don't like. Here's a little selection of knives that I have used the Edge Pro Apex to sharpen here in the last uh, six months. And I've sharpened more knives than these here but I got some fixed blades, primarily folders. Uh, one thing that having the Edge Pro Apex has done for me is I bought this little tiny Spyderco knife, okay? I bought this for, I think, $4.50 or n not more than $5 at a uh, pawn shop. And uh, I purchased it because I knew I could make it sharp again. Its blade is a little bit bent. It had a few little problems, but it is razor sharp now. And that's because I have the Edge Pro Apex. So one thing I've found is Older knives that I wasn't using, I've been able to sharpen up and use really well. Uh, newer knives, I'm not afraid of using them and abuse them because I know I can get an awesome, excellent factory edge back on them, or better than factory, and I really think better than factory in most cases. Uh, this little Benchmade Griptilian I've had for, I don't know, 10 years, and it was very, very dull, and I had kind of just stuck it in the drawer and was using this green Benchmade, which I was carrying and, and for and sharpening just by hand, but I was able to get this little Benchmade up and running and, and perfect again. A little oil on the, on the pivot point and a totally razor sharp edge. And so it's, it's breathed new life in the knives that I had just kind of laid aside. Um, this uh, Izula 2 by Essie. Uh, you can see there, I mean, that's a poppin' edge. And this is a pretty thick, stubby little bladed knife, and it slices way better than it ever did uh, from the factory just because I, I've taken more time with it. Um, one knife that I was, uh, I got super sharp to the point where I was almost afraid to kind of use it here has been this knife, another SE fixed blade here. Okay, the, the little Gibson JG3. 
and uh, it is scary sharp. I don't know how well you can see that edge, but oh my word, it is scary sharp. And so one thing I've realized is I've been using duller knives, and so I've been being less safe because I could put a little more muscle into them and they didn't really cut through things very easily. And one thing I noticed when I got these knives sharp is I needed to start being a little more careful because they were cutting very easily, very effectively through material and I suddenly had to be more intentional and more careful because my tools were better. So that showed that I had been being a little unsafe with knives because they were dull. There was a uh, quote unquote greater margin of air there because they wouldn't cut through things and I just didn't feel they were sharp. Having sharp tools again has made me realize uh, that I need to be more intentional, more careful, and that I, if you have a sharp tool, uh, you can do more work with less effort. But you have to be more careful. So there you go. If you're thinking about getting the Edge Pro Apex, I would just encourage you to do so. It's totally worth it. I know that the uh, sticker price on it is pretty shocking, 250 350 or higher than that, but it's worth it. Um, it's given me all my knives back. All the knives I've purchased in the last 12, 13, 14 years are now razor sharp and ready to go again, and it's been totally worth it. So if you're wondering if I would recommend you buy the Edge Pro Apex, I say go for it. It is awesome. It's a gear tester here, and thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and helpful. I've got a number of other products which I'm reviewing, and reviews on those products will be out in the next couple weeks. I've started a Patreon account, and I'd like to ask you for your support. For a while now, YouTube has been throttling my account and it has stopped recommending in a large, to a large part my videos. And so I'm needing additional support from you, my valued viewers and subscribers, in order to continue producing quality video reviews on the topics of shooting, camping, and survival gear. I don't expect to get rich off YouTube. I don't even expect to break even, but I am needing support from you, my valued viewers and subscribers. Even $1 a month would be extremely helpful both from a monetary standpoint and from a motivation standpoint. Thank you very much. This is the Gear Tester signing off.